welcome back. There's a new piece of iron in the shop. Maybe not exactly a machine, but every shop needs some kind of press. And I think this is gonna do pretty well for pressing in bearings and sleeves, doing keyways. It's old and dirty, and uh, it could use a new paint job as well. I've got myself a paint scraper, and let's get started knocking some paint off this thing. If you watch Dee Dee's channel, you'll recognize this kind of thing. Mine is way uglier than any of the ones that he's made, but it's a carbide insert that's just brazed on to a steel rod. This is a long hex head bolt that came out of some kind of old uh, fabric cutting table or something like that. And I gotta say, especially on this old paint, once it once it gets under the that layer of paint, the paint just really flies off. Alright. It took me all day, but scraping the paint is basically all done. Certainly all the roughing part of it is done. I think I'll go over it with with a, uh, a wire brush on an angle grinder now. Um, you see all the paint is off and you see all this sort of tar looking kind of body filler that they used back then is all over the thing because it's a real rough casting. And here's our machinery dealer's tag. Let's see what's underneath this bad coat of paint. I bought this Arbor Press from a, a garage, from a, uh, you know, a mechanics shop in Brooklyn, and I reckon that that was at least the uh, second owner, if not the third or fourth, of this press. Well, it's been a couple of hours now, and uh, the body filling is about done. I've got to stop because the smell of the Bondo is really getting to me. Real lightly just over the whole thing to knock off any dust or uh, uh, teeny bumps that might have come on it. And then I wipe it off with some mineral spirits. Painting is nearly complete. Sorry I didn't get any footage of doing the first coat of the letters, but it's kind of long and tedious. What I have left to do now is to clean up the letters. Some of the white has kind of ran over in some spots. I do that just by painting over the same color gray where that white stuff shouldn't be. I add in this hardener to it. I guess you can use Japan dryer as well, but I used this on the whole press and uh, on the surface grinder when I was painting that too. So spots like this, A, where the white paint has kind of ran over, I'll just come in there with some gray paint and erase it, so to speak. That will sharpen up the appearance of the letter. This should be fun. Here's the machinery tag, all dirty, and we're going to clean it up real quick. All the painting is finished now, and we can put back our machinery dealer's tag, since it looks so nice now and cleaned up.
who knows what happened to the original um, washer and screw that held this in. Uh, Grenard's original stuff looked a little different than your ordinary screw. And what was on there before was just something kind of like this, just a plain washer and a plain screw. And even then it was not, not even able to get tight because the pinion sort of is proud of this surface behind it. So we're going to take this part that was uh, something else before, some other project before, and I'm going to make it work right here. And here's what we just made. Now that's a lot more like it. Yeah. The press is now in what I expect to be its final spot in the shop here. Um, with the bar midway, it doesn't hit anything. If the bar is extended fully out, uh, it could hit this shelf back there, but that's no big deal. I like where it is. What's left to do is to make a daisy wheel. This press did not come with a daisy wheel, and uh, I've got a piece of steel there on the lathe, and we'll start making that. This might just be the largest diameter piece of steel that the lathe has ever had to turn. Anyway, uh, we're going to face it off. It has just a, a bandsaw finish on it. I've got about 13,000 to dig through before we uh, have one face on it. <laughs> face is done. I put a nice little chamfer on there. Let's do the other face. On an original Greenard daisy wheel you have four slots and they're three quarters of an inch, one inch, one and a quarter, and one and five eighths. I'm going to make mine kind of like that but I'm going to make uh, three quarters, a one inch, a one and a half, and then I'm going to leave the fourth one blank and that way I can make it something else in the future. I could just have a hole there. Um, and moreover, by leaving that one out, the job is up to 25% faster and more accurate. And we'll uh, do our layout the usual way, right? right? With uh, dividers for the holes. I've got some punch marks already in there. And I'll do my straight lines with these odd leg calipers. And you know, the way I like to set these is I'll put the scriber on the mark and move the odd leg till it strikes the end of the ruler. I'm about ready to start drilling the one inch hole. The three quarters came out fine, although really even on the slowest speed, this uh, old bridge port head is way too fast for running a one-inch drill. Yeah, once you start seeing sawdust, you know you're done. Once you start seeing cast iron, you know you've gone too far.
daisy wheel is complete. I filed off the burrs. Now all that's left to do is to press in the dowel pin. It's a 3 8 dowel pin and I've drilled it letter U and reamed part of the hole. And I don't need to press in this pin all the way either. Just enough that it stays in will be fine. That will be plenty. Well, that was a fun project. I enjoyed making these little things and getting the press looking nice again. Thank you for sticking with me. I know it's been a little bit of a long video, but now the shop has a proper press, and I'll never use the drill press to push in bearings or bushings or do shrink fits ever again. Catch you later.